Leopard 2 is one of the most common main battle tanks in the world. With so many countries operating any kind of Leopard 2 variant, it's not unlikely that you might face one on the battlefield, but most likely armed with the most common anti-tank weapons, rocket launchers and ATGMs. In this video, we will take a look on how to deal with most common Leopard 2 variants using such weapons. This video is sponsored by Tank Encyclopedia. Tank Encyclopedia magazine is available on Amazon and Payhip, but on Payhip you can get packs for a cheaper price. The magazine covers armored vehicles from World War I, World War II, Cold War and Modern Era, so there is something for everyone. Get yours today by following the link from the description. We will talk about several different variants of Leopard 2. Leopard 2A4, which is divided in two variants, Leopard 2A5 and 2A6, and Leopard 2A7, or rather Leopard 2A7V and some of the expert models. As mentioned, Leopard 2A4 has two variants, variant with Paquette B and variant with Paquette C armor package. Paquette C Leopard 2A4 has better protection and is not really easy to get penetrated from the front. Paquette B Leopard 2A4 is such as we saw used by Turkey in the infamous incident where they were, well, destroyed and such tanks are usually sold to other countries by Germany. Paquette C was used mostly by Germany in the 90s and I don't really know if they sold them to other countries because it is close to impossible to tell Paquette B and Paquette C Leopard 2s apart externally. Anyway, depending on what you are armed with, I will not risk taking a frontal shot at, at any of them, so let's start from hitting the weak spot from the side. Every Leopard 2 has composite armor in the turret sides, and has composite armor skirts covering the portion of the side hull armor. Those composite skirts are there to provide protection for the plus minus 30 degree coverage for the tank, so shooting at the tank from such angles is a no-go. Now, if you're facing the tank directly to the side, the hull ammo storage is the best way to go. It would pretty much guarantee the destruction of the tank, either by exploding or initiating a cook-off. You can also try to shoot the ammo storage in the turret, but you wouldn't go far, because the ammo is protected by blowout panels and blast door, which stop the fire from spreading into the crew compartment, which means that the tank is still fully operational and can very well shoot back. There is also a hydraulic pump for the turret traverse with a 32 liters of oil, but that thing is also protected with blowout panels so the fire will not spread to the crew. Keep in mind that if you are armed with a more modern ATGM, Shooting at the front hull would also not be a bad idea, because you would probably penetrate either of the two and the ammo rack would again be a way to go. Also, trying to hit the mantlet would not be a bad idea, in the worst case scenario you will most likely disable the gun. Now, Leopard 2A5 and 2A6 got a lot of improvements over 2A4. First, the turret armor saw a massive upgrade, so don't ever try to shoot it there anywhere, not even the sides, you will most likely not do much and the hydraulic traverse was replaced for electric. The hull on the other hand, well, it did not see much changes. You would still most likely be able to penetrate them with modern ATGMs. But one very important thing changed. Modern German ammunition has different propellant which makes it very hard to explode or catch fire when hit. Here are some test results of RPG-7 against DM-63. What does that mean? Well, it means that the hull ammo is no longer a way to go. In fact, it's pretty much impossible to actually destroy the tank. Best you can do is shoot the sides and target the engine or the crew compartment on the hull. And Leopard 2A7V is even better than that. The tank received great fire prevention equipment. The system has sensors around the tank's interior which detect a fire, even the tiniest bit. And in the matter of 150 milliseconds, the system ejects gases that put out the flames. That is practically not enough time for anything to catch fire, so even if the ammunition somehow catches fire, it would be instantly put out by this system, ensuring the maximum safety for the crew. Even the sides of the hull armor were increased with additional plate welded over, so angled shots would penetrate even harder. The best thing about 287V is that it got improved front hull armor, so you can forget about penetrating the front with ATGMs now. So yeah, Leopard 27V is close to impossible to destroy with rocket launchers and ATGMs. The best part is that the Germany signed a contract for Trophy Hard Kill Active Protection System, so the tanks will even receive the ability to take down incoming rockets and missiles, making them literally impossible to kill with such weapons. I just hope that the tank doesn't actually end up looking like this. 
We should also take a look at the export variants, such as Evolution and Revolution, which have improved side and front armors to specifically deal with hollow charge munitions, such as rocket launchers and ATGMs. They are very easy to tell apart from the others, because they are very thick. In the case you would ever meet one, engaging them is not advisable, because even a direct hit to the side may not achieve anything. Such side armor upgrade might also be planned for Leopard 2A7 tanks, which is evident by the pre-installed mounts on the sides, and if Leopard 2A7 tanks start receiving such armor, you can say goodbye to having any chances of dealing with such threat. That would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, or leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video, have a nice day.